those that are joining us for today, maybe you have not been with us for a while. We've been looking at the story of Joseph, and uh, we are looking at various issues in the life of Joseph. We started by trying to get the identity. We tried to find the purpose. We, find, we have tried to find what propels us in asking ourselves, do we have God that is big enough? Last time we looked at our, our conscience, and we said conscience is like the red light. It tells you to stop, but you can know the truth, but still break it. And uh, today we want to ask ourselves, are we willing for God to come and set us free? But the question that really we need to ask ourselves, are we ready? That truth that we know, are we willing for it to hurt us a little? Because the truth that you know and it hurts you, then you come out of it as you get healed. But before we do so, we have our pastors from um, a beautiful church, one of the most beautiful churches in Gedorai. Let's appreciate uh, our wonderful pastor here with his wife. Amen. Do you want to come and say jumbo? I, somebody says yes. So if they have said yes, I also say yes. Please. Let's appreciate our brother and his wife. If we have a mic for them. Thank you. There's a mic over there. Yes. Amen. Good morning, church. Praise God. I am Virginia Dongo. I am born again. I am from DC Gedurai, and we are blessed to be home. This is home. Thank you, Bishop. Bless you. Praise the Lord, Church. Good morning. I'm David Dongumburu. Yeah, the husband to this young girl here. We are excited to be here. We serve Deliverance Church Gedurai 45. We thank God. Let's appreciate the Dongos. They, they are responsible for the young people and the ropes and so on, and they have come to join us as they, the rope graduates graduate today. We, we ended up by, by saying that Joseph has a party. He has a party with his brothers, and they are sat in a certain order which says who is older and who is young. And Joseph has sat next to his brother, who is the youngest. But they have no clue who Joseph is. Maybe three things that I would say quickly, why they could not recognize Joseph. Number one is because from when you are a teenager to now, there are many things that have happened. Apart from Catherine, who remains the same, most of us change. <laughs> I said I have a photo myself of my high school days in Machaks. And uh, there I am posing and holding the, the signboard which says Machakos Technical School. Oh, it's no longer there. It doesn't exist anymore. The rapture came and took Machakos Technical. But I would still remember vividly that I had no pockets in front because we would clear the pockets in front and have only one other pocket at the back. And, but we used to have a white handkerchief for various reasons, I don't know why. And we used to put it <laughs> in front. It was a wonderful, a wonderful thing. But that guy over there with the, this guy you see today, when I was 39, uh, I had gotten all my children. Now, when I see that guy with three children and that teenager um, had uh, around 17 years, I was different. And that is one of the reasons that why they could not notice his, their brother. Because if you left somebody when they were teenagers, unless they introduced themselves to you, you have no clue who they are. They look like you can tell at you in quit, but you have to really get to know them. So that's one of the reasons. The second reason that I think they could not recognize him is because this guy was dressed up like a prime minister. Dressed up like a prime minister in Egypt. So they, could, they had no idea that, you know, 
if you put those clothes to Joseph, when, because you left him as a teenager, the clothes will not fit him. And I normally tell people, even those that leave a church for a year or two or three or ten and then you come back, and then you want to meet us where you left us, you are not becoming fair to us. Ati mtu wakija nataka utafuta ile nyumba uliko kishi kithurai. Uyo mtu hana nianzuri kwako. Sia nipigie simu niulize naishi wapi. Because faith is, you know, somebody came here and he was saying, nilikuwa nikitafuta kanisa. Na mbule unatafuta kanisa kani? Ati kare karikuwa pale chini. Kare gani? Si uliona mlango ni ule tu. Si ungeli ingia tu ujue ndiyo hiyo tu. Lakini imebadilika. Labda unasema, hii itabadilika. Eh, hey, you wait. Hata hii tutaibadilisha. Tutaka tukirembesha rembesha. Kwani tutaka tufuwa. Nazima turembesha rembeshe hapa. So Joseph was different. He was the prime minister. Then thirdly, which made them not even know he, he was their brother. He would not speak their language. You know, if somebody goes to Maju, hata hakija unge kiswahili, ya naunge kiswahili kizuri sana. Kiko na twang. Hati hebari ya ka. Una. Una takezeo padigani. You know. Alafu nambe wacha. Wea ongea kikuyu kwani. So those three would be reasons why they could not tell who he was. But he himself from where he was, he knew them. Because they were older than him. You know, anybody, like for, for, for those guys that have seen you grow, unless you remind me who you are, you can see me and know me. That's why I like the people who greet me. I love when I'm here. Ispokuwa watoto wagashuru, wanafanana na Diana sana, no, wanafanana na gashuru. When I would meet them. But there are some of your guys that when I meet them, I wonder, yeah, you look familiar, but but for them, they know us. Kwanza na kusalimia na kuambia, na kujua bisho. Siwe ni baba nyambura, na mungai, na joe, na kujua sana. Sime ni wachachi hiyo. Hati chachi hiyo. Kwa hivyo chachi kuna watu wengi sana. Aliongea na interpreter. Ya nasikia vila unasema, like we saw, he heard them say that God is punishing them for what they had done for Joseph. He is hearing them speak Hebrew, but he is pretending he is not hearing. Badu anatafta mkalimani, wambie. Blah, 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 blah. You know when we were in school in primary, there was a play that we used to, to act like you are the interpreter. Some of you remember. My name is John. Johanna. <laughs> and I'm coming from Johannesburg. Now you met the Mohukowa Johanna. You know those guys. <laughs> so they could not understand who this person is, but he himself knew them. I want to read two, two scriptures and then we'll continue. The first scripture that I read is found in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse number 6, which says simply like this Love rejoices in truth. It just rejoices in truth and with the truth. That's where love rejoices. Love does not rejoice on evil. It rejoices on truth. In the book of John 8 and 32, there's another scripture there that says something like this. You shall know the truth and the truth will do what? Will set you free. Now, many times we say that you, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But until I started working on this, what I'm sharing with you, I did not know there is another element. Because the question that I ask myself, why should I go to Cataloni or Heaven's Gate? And my life does not change. My character does not change. Yet I pray to God, I roll over, I go to Cataloni, I fast. I fast for 40 days until when, after, a week after the fast, Nobody knows I went to the fast. Or I go to an encounter. And I have a wonderful testimony from the encounter. A week after the encounter, nothing happens or appears to have happened. Sometimes I ask, what is going on? What really happens? It is because it is not the truth that I know that sets me free. But it is the truth that I know which hurts me. As I come out from the wounds of the heart of that truth, then my life changes. 
This church we speak a lot about the truth. And sometimes you wonder why do we struggle and yet there is a lot of truth. And this is because the knowledge of the truth that you know cannot change you. You will have a lot of knowledge, head knowledge, and yet you'll still be angry. One time I preached here and the sermon was good, but later that evening somebody knocked his wife dead. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, somebody listens to a wonderful sermon here about loving your wife and in the evening you are divorced or you had already planned to divorce one another. Even the truth that I speak, you don't hear. Because it is not that head knowledge. Have you ever been told something and you say, Nimeona? Because si macho ya naona ni conviction. Daniyako meaza kuhisi. Now, I know this. It is not the truth that I know, but it is the truth that I know which hurts. When it hurts, it changes me. Why am I still stubborn? And I know the truth. Why am I still a liar? And I know the truth. Why am I still greedy? And I know the truth. Why am I filled with the lust? And I still know the truth. Why am I still arrogant? And I still know the truth. Why am I self-willed? And I know the truth. Why? It is because the truth that I know has not gotten to the level where it hurts. I'm sorry, not yet. Until it hurts, then your sorry can mean something. Now let's go back to the story that we, 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 we are talking about. The truth that I know, the truth that hurts. Two chapters, 44 and 45, are the chapters that we are looking at today. And I'll read a couple of verses and then we'll continue. I want to start from verse, chapter 43, the last verse, verse 34, which says, when portions were served to them from Joseph's table, Benjamin's portion was five times as much as anyone else. And I said last Sunday that for the first time, there was no envy. Benjamin, you can have six times. Enjoy it. But we'll still enjoy what we have. No greed. No, nothing like saying, no, Reuben is the firstborn. He should have five times. No. They were, God had dealt them to that level. They had grown to that level where they were not afraid of what was going to happen to any one of them. Even if they, you became what, they had no problem with you. They had no problem with Benjamin having five times. The last statement says this. They feasted. They feasted. And if, if, if you like to, to put, to, to paraphrase that, you would say, walikunywa mbaka wakarilax. So they feasted and drank freely with him. Yani wakakunywa mbaka wakarilax. Kukunywa wakarilax ni kukunywa na kukula unawacha breaks. Kukula unarilax na kusikia freedom ni kukula na kurelax unakosa vitu vya kuficha somebody had have said this you see the truth this kind of truth that we are talking about you will never find yourself until you find the truth or you face the truth about yourself because a lot of us we don't want to face ourselves our weakness our challenges we only want Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, if I called you to give a testimony here, I can guarantee what you are going to say. You might say something like this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Guarantee. <laughs> Even when you are hurting and you know what is causing you to hurt, you will not say it. You know, I have had meetings where people had quarreled. But when they come to the meeting that I'm in, they are all happy. And then I'm wondering, I was told they were quarreling. What has happened? Because sometimes we can be so hypocritical. We can all want to tell people what they want. People want to hear that I'm okay. I normally tell people this. When you ask me how I am, I ask you. Ni kwambie ile ya muafrika ama ni kwambie ile ya mkristo. Ya muafrika utoke dunia gani? We mwega. Upawaku, koro, 
Si unasikia ni there na saa hiyo unaweza kuwa unaumwa na tumbo. But you see unless you are able to face your truth and I know many of us don't know it even couples we don't know how to deal with the truth actually we don't know how to deal with the truth and some of us even couples today if you had an opportunity to go kutoka ile na usipatikane tena wengine mnaweza toka na mwama mwele kabisa because there are some truth secret umeweka nyingi and the more secrets you keep into yourself the more harder it is for you to face yourself secret siri siri wanaume ukifariki tunajua ulikuwa umewaa wake wangapi inakuwa tokea tu kwa sasa ukiwa tajiri kama uko maskini hakuna kuna watoto wanakuja but if you have something <laughs> wale tuko na something wale tuko na something amen tuchunge sana wale tuko na something dna So I have told you that they ate and they were happy but they could not recognize although they were supposed to be free yani ile uhuru unaongea walevi uongea mpaka anakuambia ako na kuku ngapi kwa sababu anaringa anaongea mpaka kambuzi kake kanakuwa ngombe anaanza kukuambia hata niko na ngombe moja na unamjua si unamjua ako na mbuzi tu unajua mbuzi yake imepanda anaongea mpaka ile gari yake inakuwa Mercedes inakuwa gari si ya kuingia ni gari ya kupanda ulevi inavuguaga mtu mpaka <laughs> anaongea mambo mpaka unashindwa ni yeye so they, they, what joseph had an idea was for them to get to that level that they can speak out but they never spoke out although they were free with each other they never spoke out because they did not even know who he was wamekula and then sasa the bible tells us in chapter 44 verse 1 now joseph gave this instruction to the stewards of his house fill the men's sack with as much food as they can carry and put each man silver in the mouth of his, his sack then put my cup the silver one in the mouth of the younger the youngest one sack along with the silver for his grain in other words joseph kuna kitu ameona akikufanyika there is something that never happened they never recognized him they never knew him they never confessed they never repented there was no reconciliation that took place so he is trying to seek for reconciliation and what is doing i told you last sunday when i was sharing i said there are things that can provoke you unajikumbuka mimi niliwaambia nikija hiyo sunday nikiteremka nikakumbuka shosho na nilikufa kitambo na nikakumbuka kitu sele sio ni sele kukumbuka kitu sele chakula kimekojolewa na mtoto sele kitu sele tu kitu lakini kinakuvunga baka unataka kuwekwa huru kitu kidogo tu kinakukumbusha tu you know as you drive by unakumbuka kuna mtu alikunyang'anya as you you hear names unakumbuka kuna mtu alikupiga you know there are some people that cannot even enjoy their spouses because of what happened to them they have to deal with it you have to see it unajua kuna wengine hapa ati mke wako anakuibaga amen alikuiba nini kwani kuna mtu anaweza kwa mfano ninaweza hii bales kile yako nacho ni changu pesa ziko kwa bag ni zangu ninaweza muiba si ni kuzichukua tu na kuzitumia alafu wale wananiibaga ni hao wengine lakini yale siwezi niiba mimi ni wake na kile niko nacho. Sasa so, nikuuliza tu eh tumeacha tu kuigita na ndio wao ile. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's all. That's it. He gave an instruction. I and the instruction was followed. See I told you love rejoices in truth. Love does not rejoice in evil. If you don't tell the truth about yourself 
you cannot tell the truth of others. You have no way. Actually, you think they are also lying because you have no truth within you. But if you learn to speak the truth from within you, then you can speak about others. To find God who is truthful, you must find yourself first and be truthful about yourself. Be truthful about yourself. Be truthful about yourself. So in the morning, they all left. Remember they had eaten and they were okay. They all left and they were going home. And they were followed. They had not gone very far. They were just followed. I think they had not gotten to Thika. They were just followed. And for us that went to the Holy Land, we know. They had not gone. Hata wako mefika ready si. Si tulichukua almost one hour. Na nigali. Na wana kona punda. Hako wameenda bali. They were still within Egypt. Then they are brought back. Now imagine this guy, the steward of Joseph, goes and tells them, Mumem will be my boss. But these guys are able to tell the boss, we are not thieves actually, we don't steal. Remember the last time you gave us our money, we brought it back. We are not thieves. We even think the party we were given is because we are honest. We brought the money back and the, the guy gave us a wonderful feast. We are not thieves. So one of them says, if any one of us has stolen, we will all get back and become your slave. And the one who has stolen, you kill him. Remember, the, the spirit of killing is the spirit they had. If you go back to Genesis 37, they were talking about killing Joseph. The spirit of killing is like, Ikuhapo, let's kill Joseph. Until uh, Judah says, no, let's sell him. Let's sell him. These Midianites are passing. Let's sell him. And they sell him. But here again, the spirit of killing. The spirit of killing. So they said, no. See, the point that I'm bringing to you is this. At that point, they are saying you can kill the first person and we all become slaves. But you know, the steward was not struggling. He knew where he had to put it. So he goes to the youngest and he finds the cup. And, he find, and he does, he's not bothered about the money. It is the cup. And he says, see, you have stolen. And from that point, there is shiver. They are feeling shiver going down their, 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 their feet. Why? Because of the promise they had given their father. So when they are brought back to Joseph, and I want to pick it in verse 15, Joseph said to them, what is this you have done? Don't you know that a man like me can find things out by definition? In actual fact, he is even telling them, see, see, me, I'm the prime minister, and by definition, I can know who has taken it. I send a steward, he went to the guy who has taken it. That, you don't know that? I can do definition, divination. That's what he was telling them. God, God brings these people back to Joseph so that he can handle with them and do three things that are very critical for them to confess, for them to repent, and for reconciliation to take place. You see, it is not finished until proper reconciliation finds place. Until proper reconciliation finds place. So listen to what Judah says in verse number 16 as he becomes a spokesperson. What can we say to my Lord? Judah replied. What can we say? Can we prove our innocence? God has uncovered your servant's guilt. We are now my Lord's slave. We are ourselves and the one who was found to have the cup. In other words, what Joseph was waiting for comes forth. They are telling Joseph, God has uncovered our guilt. Remember what we talked about the guilty conscience last time. All what they are emphasizing is our guilt has been uncovered. We, we know what we did. The Lord has dealt with us. Now we are ready. We want to be slaves to you. We are ready. In other words, confession has taken place. Judah acknowledges that our guilt has been brought forth. And I'm saying again, unless the truth hurts you, like it is hurting Judah at this point, then you are forgive you repeat it again. But if it gets to that level where it hurts you, God, you have uncovered me. So Joseph is telling them, don't you worry, I only pick the, the guy. The only the guy. I want the guy. Now you see, 
He wants them to go further in their confession. He wants them to confirm whether his father is there. He wants them to say something, and they are saying. They start telling Joseph, you know, Joseph, when we came to you, we told you we were 12. We told you. We live with our father who is aging and ailing. And we told you he has a small of us, the youngest of us, who he lives with. And we told you he cannot release him. But you asked us to bring him. So when we went, we, we were not going to come back without, without Benjamin. So we told our father. And when the father could not, we told him, then we will not. But when he was released, I told my father, I guaranteed my father that if anything happens to Benjamin, I'll be responsible. And now I want to be responsible. He's telling Joseph, I want now to be responsible. I like something that he says to Joseph. He is speaking to Joseph, but he does not know that Joseph, him he is speaking to, he's the one. That Joseph is still alive. He's, he's, he's trying to tell, if I go and tell our father that Benjamin has remained, he will die. He will die in sorrow. Because he has already lost one other. Confession is, yes, we have lost another. We lost another. Our father has lost another. We cannot lose another. If we lose another, our father will die in sorrow and in famine. Then the Bible tells us that Joseph in 45, chapter 45, verse 1, then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his brothers. He could not control himself before all his attendants. He could not control himself, even among himself. He was a prime minister. Can you imagine a prime minister? Because the Bible says, at that point, what he did was he cried. He cried until the weeping was so loud in verse number three, verse number two. He wept so loud that the Egyptian had him and Pharaoh's household had him. Yani, Alilia, ile kali. Ibada ya kwanza nilisema, wakikuu tukifiwa tunaliaga, lakini yoni mchezo. Kwa hiyo kiona mkikuu ya nalilia kwa kaburi, na anashikwa, ni mchezo tu. Ni kama ndrama. Si muna jijua. Una jikontrol. But you see, I said in the first service, they are professional mourners. And unless you are told they are professional, you have no idea. Because they, do, they don't do it like if they are going to be paid or something. They do it like it is real. And I said uh, in the first service that when we lost one of our sisters who was in the choir, we all went to Kisumo, to Bareha. And we arrived in the morning. Uh, Janet, we arrived in the morning. <laughs> And when we arrived in the morning, they, for them, feast, you feast it throughout. You land, you start eating. You land, you start eating. So we landed, and within a very short while, we were feasting. Now, hata wale wajaluo nilikuwa nao kwa group yangu, hawakulia. Sijui kwa saa nilikuwa hawakutaka kulia nikiona, hawatukulia, sisi tulienda but I tell you I had not seen a professional mourner myself, that's the first time I saw si mama amekuja na hako naka mzigo sijuka anabeba nini maybe I don't know, maybe somebody will tell me anabeba kama mzigo, ni kama kondo nakuja nako alipo fika kwa geti ya kakaweka chini kale kondo Aka piga nduru moja. Kile nilikuwa nimeshika nikaweka chini. Atukuwa kwa hema. Tulikuwa kwa hema kubwa huko. Atukuwa kwa kanyumba. Tulikuwa huko. Nikaweka kile nilikuwa nimeshika chini. Alipiga nduru. Na akaenda chini. Akaamuka. 
Sasa nikaanza kuuliza yule ni nani? Sasa unfortunately nauliza wa Kikuyu. Hawajui. Sasa mmoja yule anajifanya anajua sana. Sema huyu ni relative, nafikiria ni wa karibu sana. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Ama wakati nienda kwa kina Moses. Lakini Moses alinisaidia sana. Aliniambia ukae chonjo. <laughs> Anambia wale ni relative wa kutoka huko wanalilia kwa kona yao hivyo lakini sasa that was after kwa hivyo ya Moses nilikuwa nimejua kuna watu kama wale and i'm saying now joseph alipiga nduru kama hiyo ambayo anybody whether you like it or not whether you are the priest on duty you will hear there is a mona that has landed there is something that has happened i think he called out and said my brothers are here and he was crying ile ya tumbo unajua kuna hii hapa analia ile ya tumbo ile tumbo inaenda nayo kwa vile ame, ame, hey everybody had it everybody had it everything that he had carried for 22 years was coming out for the first time he has held himself now he cannot hold it anymore these are my brothers they have to know it they have confessed it now it is my time to confess it blessed be the name of the lord you know truth will hurt you after i shared last sunday there are a few people who came to see me two or three one saw me immediately when i was getting out na kaniuliza unahubiri mambo kama hayo kwa nini kaambia sijui unajua shoshua lini unajua shoshua lini sumbua sana na sikujua ananisumbua paka hiyo kweli kaniingilia hapa sasa hiyo because this is what the statement they said because bishop what you are saying the truth if i do it the truth will hurt me for a long time and i said now that is what it needs to do if it hurts you by the time you come out of those hearts you will not do it again it will not happen again because it has it is the truth that you know which has hurt you and as you come out from that truth your life will never be the same again remember even if you lost a loved one and you have never settled it it will still be there but the truth is you know you need to forgive them when you face it no there will be some pain when you deal with it and you settle it it will be over kuna wengine wajifanyaga sugu sili siku utalia utakuwa peke yako wanaume kwanza talia peke yako afadhali ulie tukiwa around tukushikilie truth here they are joseph cries until all the egyptian and then joseph said to his brothers i am joseph is my father for truth is he alive what a history story yenu hapa sijui nini is he alive and they say yes he's alive joseph is telling to his brothers come close to me when they had so he said i'm your brother joseph the one you sold into egypt remember he, he even himself he thought he had, see, i told you he had not forgotten that's why he, he named one child who manasseh why because i'm forgetting but he had not forgotten then he called the other one Ephraim because i've prospered and i told you that when we get to chapter 50 is where his father jacob helps him don't see this see the blessing because god when god blesses us we see his blessing the other things are dimmer a little bit blessed be the name of the lord i am your brother i am your brother joseph the one you sold into egypt and now Do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourself for selling me here because it was to save lives and God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been famine in the land and for the next five years there will be no plowing nor reaping. You know, Joseph is telling them now. Oh, let me tell you. We talked about Joseph. When he was in the pit, he never knew this will happen. But when he is there, this is that which was prophesied. I like the story of one brother when I travel with him he is so humorous so we we are crossing over Canada to we crossing US to Canada and then he, he he keeps on saying bishop this one is that one which was prophesied when you got saved when the lord when, when it was told you that the lord has opened doors for you this is one of them so there are doors that are open and they were open then you still have to walk through them it doesn't matter where you are right now if god is god one day you will walk through those doors if he has said it it will come to pass i am joseph you sold me 
but you know what? I came to save you. When he was in prison, that was, he had no idea he would save anybody. He thought even God has forgotten. But there is no dream, no dream, no revelation that will go uncovered. One day the Lord will come to you. He will come to you. And I pray that I will be there when he comes to you. So that you can share with me or I can see the joy. You know, some of you, I know where you are. So that I can see the beaming of the joy of the Lord, what God will have done to you. I knew it too, pale. Na si unafiki, mi napendaga ukibarikiwa. Kwa sababu, ukibarikiwa, maubiri yangu inakuwa ya kweli. Sa ukikana watu wa barikiwi, maubiri yangu itakuwa fake. Kwa nini yetu wanabarikia kwa pana? When I pray, I pray that God will prosper you as he prospers me in the name of the Lord. So Joseph tells them, I am Joseph and I'm here to come and save you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Repentance has taken place. Confession has taken place. Reconciliation is what is remaining. I want to go back to Judah. Judah, if you go to 37... Judah is the one who says to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother? Let's cover, let's, let's sell him. Let's not even, let's sell him. There are some guys coming, let's sell him. Remember, among the brothers, they are the ones who had said, here comes a dreamer. All of them had said, let's kill him. Let's throw him, let's kill him. But then Midian I show up, he said, let's sell him. Let's sell him. Our brother and cover up his, let's sell him. Let's, we better sell him, not kill him. Let's sell him. And I was saying, this is the same Judah who says, now I'm ready to die for Benjamin. Yes, leave, release Benjamin. I'm ready. Something is happening. He has a, he's a changed man. He's not only confessed, but he's a changed man. Oh, I love that. And then when I go to the New Testament, I love this. You see, if, if you're like me, who read and try to critique a little bit, I, I, when I read, I, I try to critique Judas a little bit. Judah, a little bit. Why? It's because chapter 38 is all about Judah. Right? It is not a good story. It's not a good one. Now some of you don't read your Bible so you don't know the story. The Bible says the guy goes, uh, he left his brothers and went down to stay with a man of Adullam named Hiria. There Judah met the daughter of a Canaanite man named Sua. He married her and made love to her. She became pregnant and gave back to a son. So there, whatever he did, he got son, 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 son. Now you are getting the story. You are? Oh, so his sons, they marry somebody called Tamar, the one of the first son. Marries. And the lady dies. Now this, this is Judah. I'm telling you, this is the same Judah that we are reading in Matthew. That's why I normally say, God does not look my past. God is so interested in my future. And my future is better than where I am. Oh yes. Judah. Kijana wa kwanza anaoa. Anakufa. Mile ya uko. Ilikuwa nzuri. Ndugu ya liye fuata. Oa. Muko wa ndugu yako. Akawa. Na ya kakufa. Hey. Ule mungine na ya kawa. Na ya kakufa. Ah si. We. Bagu. Weka mute. Hapa <laughs> kuna kitu Hapa kuna kitu Judah akasema Ay, Ayuwezekani his story You know the story is told The story goes on until Tama left But a very sad woman Hi. Then she was told A story said Na yule baba mukwe Anapita area Wanaume kuna pepo lazima tumkeme. I don't know. Yeah. Every scat. Oh God have mercy on men. Baba muku anakuja. The lady just. Akatua nguwe za mwoni. Akajipamba vipoa. Akaka maskani. Now I ask myself. Really? Really? Judah? Are you serious? Slept with this woman. Gave some miti awekewe na hakujua melala. Iyo ni pepo, nyeusi, imechanganyika rangi. 
iko na manjano ndani yake iko ni mbaya ni rangi mbaya so that is the judah we are talking about let's leave him there but in the new testament judah that lineage because when god says he's going to bless the fourth the fifth the sixth generation the, the tenth generation he means it because the, the matthew tells us this is the genealogy of jesus the son of david the son of abraham now abraham blah 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 and then jacob judah and his brothers joseph is not mentioned but judah and his brothers i'm telling someone here don't write yourself out don't allow people to write you out because god has not finished with you yet there is something that god wants to do with your change your heart when you turn it to the lord a couple of years after that almost 20 years judah is a changed man he wants to give himself a sacrifice for his brother and many years later this is the genealogy of jesus messiah the son of david the son of abraham abraham begot isaac isaac begot jacob jacob begot judah and his i love that oh this is the genealogy of jimmy kimani the son of abraham abraham begot ngoge ngoge begot mungai mungai begot kimani and kimani yeah Woo! many years down the road the story changes tell your neighbor neighbor my story is changing yes my story is changing yes my story nitasema ni mungu there is no argument about it until i believe it because sometimes i don't think so but i will say it to myself until i believe it yani nitasema mimi nitabarikiwa mpaka jirani wasikie vibaya yani yani you know kitu tu nilisema ni ati kuku za jirani wakitagea kwangu nitarudisha mayai nitaweka wangu yeah hiyo ni wizi sitaki kuku wategee kwangu wakitega nitapelekea mwenyewe niweke zangu lakini wakija wategee kule inaniambia kwangu kuna amani nilete zangu reconciliation you know reconciliation is so sweet reconciliation is so sweet when you reconcile you feel good Reconciliation is so sweet. You know there are some of you that there's a guy in this church that borrowed your money. He has not paid. Unamuonaga roho inastuka kidogo. Reconciliation will give you peace. Reconciliation will give you peace. Woo! Reconciliation will give you peace. When I came back from Sweden I had a muzungu that was sponsoring me with the 2800 1978 sio ni pesa nyingi 2800 mshahara wetu tukimaliza polytechnic ilikuwa 800 sasa mimi ni 2800 na pesa kuna watu wananusaga i never look like i had it lakini kuna mtu alinusa nusa akaona niko na tu pesa akakuja akanikopa akanunua BMW 60000 akanikopa <laughs> Huyu ndugu akanihepa Tulikuwa tunaomba pamoja tulikuwa tunapendana nilipomkopesha na ameshindwa kunilipa akahepa Nikimuona nasikia vile naweza shika ye nitikize yeye niweke yeye central police lakini siku moja you know god 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 you are god siku moja nimekuja harusi na hiyo siku nikasema nitajitreat you know you can treat yourself nikaingia saa Henry nikanunua suti mpya saa mpya tai mpya kiatu mpya na kadhalika mpya <laughs> on a friday <laughs> wewe mungu ni ajabu nikaenda kwa harusi hiyo harusi ilikuwa poa sana kwa sababu isipokuwa mke wa harusi aliletwa na gari bibi harusi au wengine wote wasimamizi na naye oa walikuja na Kenya bus 
Hayo ilikuwa harusi mzuri sana. Oh God you can do it again. Unajua inakuwa ka love love. Hiyo ni upendo kabisa. Hakuna Mercedes, hakuna Peugeot 4545, hakuna bus. Number 6, number 7 inaangusha watu pale kanisani au Saints Cathedral. Nilipofika, I used to be one of the best MCA and paid MCA. Kumbe mnanifuatilia hivyo eh? Niliona kama mumelala MC. <laughs> Ambaye hakulipwa. Nilifanya sare. Bure tu. Sasa angalia kasuti ni kapia. Si hata ninaonekana kweli MC mpoa. Yule alikuwa MC kwa hiyo harusi hakuja. Na ni harusi ya rafiki yangu anayemua ni rafiki yangu wana, wote ndio na si tuko marafiki sote tuko pale sema kemani chukua job my spirit were very high oh god may your spirit be high because if you want to forgive someone your spirit has to be high eh hey, pesa kama hizo ambazo ugenunua nyumba buruburu ukakaa kidogo umalize iwe yako kwani ilikuwa 120 ugenunua buruburu nyumba mpya my spirit was high oh god so I was there, you know. Nina pereka, nina pereka service, nina pereka service, na ugea kikuyu, na ugea kizugu. Because I was the best interpreter in Swahili. Everything. Na ugea kizungu, na omba na kikuyu, na omba na kiswahili, na omba na kizungu, na maliza imeni ya kikuyu, imeni ya kiswahili, na imeni ya kizungu. My spirit was very high. When I said, and the first speaker to speak on behalf of is so and so, I saw the brother. Outside, because the, park, the hall was packed. He was outside. Kwa dilisha. Nika muona. Nika skiero inasema. This is it. This is it. Go and forgive him. Yeah. Nilipo hacha huyo akiongea. Nika enda mbio mbio kwake. Nika muambia brother. Bona asfiwe. Nime kusame hair. You owe me nothing. Na nika rudi. Haku lala hiyo siku. Adi nilipa mandi. Sasa nilikubali kulipwa. Hata nyinyi wengine mtakubali kulipwa. Lakini when your spirit is high, you can forgive anything and anyone. Reconciliation. What happens? Joseph calls them in, hugs them. The Bible tells me why I believe that real reconciliation took place is verse number 14. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him weeping. And he kissed all his brothers. And wept over all his brothers. Afterwards, his brothers talked with him. Wow! No heart feeling. They are forgiven. They are free. They have been reconciled with the family again. They are able to talk to their brother. Actually, maybe they were asking, brother, please forgive us. Hey, na yo, safari mekua mrevu. Na yo, Joseph, anasema, nini ya mjuhidi? Hata prison ni meingia. Hey, area. Nikifika hapa, siyo mchezo. Ni mungu tu. Sasa endeni na mukimbie. Mwende mbio. Mulirete baba yangu. You know, they were able to talk freely. I pray for some of you that God will reconcile you with someone that you have not even talked. And they are here in church. Can you imagine? And akikuonea hile mrango na ingilia hile. Ukitokea hii atatokea hile. Na uko hapa na unanisikiza tu. Na ni pesa umekopa mtu. Siwe ulipe. Ama wacha niombea yule ambaye alikukopesha. Roho wabwana awajaze na hiyo high feeling. Wakuforgive. Mukitokea pale na wakimbie hivi. Wakushikie pale kwa gate. Wakambie forgiven. Go free from today. Because you are a better than all the monies that can be found. You are worthy more. Let's all stand up. Remember, you never find yourself until you find the truth about yourself. If you don't tell the truth about yourself, you cannot tell the truth of others. To find God who is truth, you have to find the truth about yourself. It's important, it's key. 
underlining that, the truth has to hurt you. That truth that you know, before it sets you free, it will, it akanyanga mahali katika maisha yako. Our gracious heavenly father, the father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This morning where we stand, this morning where we are, we are in the side of heaven that we need a Joseph who can come and reconcile us back to you and to himself. And we have a Joseph with us. We have our Savior with us in our midst whose ministry is to reconcile us. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation so that we can reconcile many others. Heavenly Father, we pray that today in this service, today in this service, there is someone who has heard me whose life will never be the same because the truth is hurting right now and they are going to look for, uh, 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 for reconciliation with someone, either in this church or outside. You are there, my brother and my sister. And as I spoke, you said, yes, I needed someone to pray. I need someone to pray with me. I'm not saying it is easy. I'm saying it is hard. Facing it, it's hard and it will hurt you. But as you get out of the heart, you will never repeat the same issue 